all ready. We're, We're already ready. being books. spunky. All right, let's New see books. if I can flip this around because I know last week everything was backwards. Ah, uh, can I flip it around? Can ah? Uh... Yay! Wait. I know. I hold up a book. Is it backwards? I can't it, tell. No, it's not. Okay, yeah. all right. All right, so I think this should be better because I think last week everything was backwards in the video. Thanks a lot, Facebook. Yeah, thanks, Facebook. They didn't ask us. No, they didn't, and they really they should consult do. their local librarian before really need to making ask changes. Yeah. yeah, but we're back. We made it back anyway. Yep. Despite Lots all of that. Lots of good stuff today. Yeah, I have this a bigger pile exciting. than I realized. Um, uh, I'm looking at it going, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so all let's right. start with... Um, this is, I believe, this is the last uh, Practical Magic book by Alice Hoffman. This is the book of magic that I love. The cover's got all of this, like, special shimmer on it. That's cool. Yeah, see, look, look at all the shimmer on it. She's just really popular yeah. author, really good author. Yeah. yeah so. nice. I, think, I believe it's the last book in the series. Yep. Um, Meg Cabot is back with a new book called No Words. But it's got words. It's got plenty of words. <laughs> Why would you may think this book is of full of words? Yes. Yeah. I like the cover. It's it is. Fun. It's very it's colorful. Very opposite of what season we're in now. Yeah. Um, Good welcome to see. Little Bridge, one of the smallest, most beautiful islands in the Florida Keys. It's starring a children's novelist named Joe. Um, and her her long longtime nemesis, best selling author Will Price, lives on the same island. Oh. Um, With all the islands, but he had to choose that one. And on. she, she's she been uh, given an offer to speak at a book festival on the island, and she's like, oh, he's there. What do you think happens? We have watched enough Hallmark movies. I know. Does romance ensue? <laughs> Let me skim here. Uh, she's suffering writer's block. She has a deadline. Um... When she arrives on the island, she's in for a shock. Will is not only at the book festival, but seems genuinely sorry for his past actions and more than willing to mm. make amends. Ooh. Maybe he's on a program, like a 12-step program. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to seek, uh, you know, some kind of reconciliation. Yeah. But then there's some kind of disaster. Things seem to be looking up until disaster strikes, causing Joe to wonder, do any of us ever really know anyone? So, mm. I don't know. So, Hallmarky, but with know. a twist. Hallmarky, but the twist. Yeah, sounds good. And the cover is really fun. I think that's definitely midwinter. That's something you need to yes. pick up. And uh, bonus, we are doing our books, our treats coming up uh, on the uh, 30th. Yeah. We're going to be outside from 9 o'clock to 12 when the library is open giving away books. And this is one of the books we're giving away for got adults. Got an extra. Yeah, got an extra. Got a nice, got a nice copy right here so to give away. any adults want to come trick-or-treating. We love to just give things away. We do, especially good books. Yeah. Uh, this one. Um, is called The Girls in the Stilt House by Kelly Mustian. Hmm, what's this one about? I don't know this one. Well, it's an astonishingly assured debut that draws oh, you in and holds okay. you so spellbound and apparently will move you to tears, so. Oh boy, a debut author, nice. I guess if you need okay. to feel your feelings. Uh, set in 1920s Mississippi, a debut su Southern novel weaves a beautiful and harrowing tale of two young women cast in an unlikely partnership through murder. Murder? Murder! Oh, okay. That doesn't look like a murdery book. <laughs> Surprise murder! All right, all right. I think our most murder surprises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're probably right. They're a surprise to right. someone. And it's a surprise with the cover, because the cover doesn't look spooky. It looks like... I don't know. Uh, that house looks pretty run down. It does, but doesn't necessarily. I feel like it just looks like poor. But now, That's as we true. know, it's a murder house, too. Okay. That's true. Um... Ada promised herself she would never go back to the trace to her hard life on the swamp and her harsh father. Sorry, <laughs> a hard life on the swamp. Is there another kind of life? Sorry, uh. bad. <laughs> but now, after running away to Baton Rouge and briefly knowing a different kind of life, she finds herself with nowhere to go but back home. And she knows there will be a price to pay with her father. Matilda, daughter of a sharecropper, is from the other side of the trace doing what she can to protect her family from the threats and demands of some particularly callous locals is an ongoing and escalating struggle. She forms a plan to go north to pack up the secrets she's holding about her life in the south and hang them on the line for all to see in Ohio. Or as people from Ohio say, Ohio. I learned that. I have a friend <laughs> oh, from Ohio. 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 Mm. Um, as the two girls are drawn deeper into a dangerous world of bootleggers, and moral corruption, 
They must come to terms with the complexities of their tenuous bond and a hidden past that links them in ways that could cost them their lives. Nice. Yeah, so it sounds a little. It sounds. It sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah and historical. It does. So people love that, and yeah. it's not a World War II book. It's not. Not. In so this 20s. is different. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to see if there were any more um, subject headings, but it's just uh, Mississippi fiction. No I want to know more. We're not. Cheating. Yeah, they're not giving. I like to do that. I it's like to look at cheat. the subject headings. Yeah, I do that too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> just in case I missed something big in the in the I details. Like, I like to cheat a little. Um, I have a bunch of nonfiction today as well. Oh. Um, this Susan Orlean, she wrote uh, the, it was the, what is it, the library book that was really, really popular? Yeah, the library book, that big red tome that everybody was reading a couple of years ago. Um, this is called On Animals. Hmm. Um, gathers a lifetime of musings, meditations, and in-depth profiles about animals. How we interact with animals has preoccupied philosophers, poets, and naturalists for ages. Um, she's been drawn to stories about how we live with animals and how they abide with us. Um, as I've been telling everybody in the library about how my cat made me open up a can of wet food at 5.30 in the morning today. <laughs> she's not abiding you, that is for sure. She does not she's abide like, you. you belong to me. Yeah, yeah, she's not abiding. Um, <laughs> On Animals examines animal-human relationships through the compelling encounters that she's had over the course of her celebrated careers. Household pets, animals we raise to become meat on our plates, and the creatures who could eat us for dinner. Uh, tamed and untamed animals we share our planet with who are central to human life. So that sounds really interesting. Yeah. Uh, we meet a show dog, a lost dog, a pigeon who knows how to get home. Delightful and profound. Uh, a woman who has 23 pet tigers. It just sounds really interesting. Yeah, so. it does sound interesting. Yeah. Uh, she talks about dogs, turkeys, chickens, pet tigers, cats, and coyotes. Hmm. Like everyone in Los Angeles, the coyotes I've seen there look like they work out with personal trainers. <laughs> <laughs> and they're buff. They're yes. buff, I guess. Yes, like everybody there. Awesome. That sounds good. <laughs> Um, Ooh, this one, this one is called No Cure for Being Human and Other Truths I Need to Hear by Kate Bowler. It's true, there is no cure. There is no cure. There is no cure. Grace, wisdom, and humor. Kate Bowler encourages us to cut back on the self-help Kool-Aid and teaches us what it means to be human. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of that social media stuff like self-care and treat yourself. And I think she's kind of keeping it a little more real okay. in this than that. Mm. Um, how do you move forward with a life you didn't choose? Uh, it's hard to give up on the feeling that the life you really want is just out of reach. A beach body by summer, a trip to Disneyland around the corner, a promotion on the horizon. Everyone wants to believe that they are headed toward good, better, best. But what happens when the life you hoped for is put on hold indefinitely? And I think a lot of people are feeling that over yeah, the last- Yeah, it seems very timely. Almost it's, two yeah, years yeah, now. Yeah, it seems very timely. Um, Hmm. Uh, Kate Bowler believed that life was a series of unlimited choices until she discovered that at 35 she had cancer. Oh, um, so, you know, not only with our situation, but any situation that you may have, how do you move forward? Um, you know, there's all of this best, live your best life, and she kind of figures out how do you, how do you actually come to terms with your life and not get sucked into that? Oh, it's just so easy. Just live your best life. Just move on. How do you do that? How do you do hmm. that when you want to be a real human and not, uh, just a robot, you know, and pretend that everything's okay. Hmm. Um, so it sounds like it's, it it's really, really good. good. I've yeah. actually been seeing a lot of, um, like, popular reviews for it um, in publishing journals and on social media, and people seem to really be taking to it, especially if you're on social media and you're sick of people being like, everything's great, just move forward. Yeah, that's really not helpful. No, it's not. Um, this sounds like a good book. It does. It sounds really interesting. I actually have it on my to-read list. Mm -hmm. So we'll see when I can get to it. I have a huge pile of books on my like library book chair. And it gets bigger every day. Yep. Uh, this one sounds really fun. It's called All of the Marvels. Yay! A journey to the ends of the biggest story ever told. Mutants, monsters, monarchs, mystery! Uh, <laughs> the first ever full reckoning with Marvel Comics interconnected half million page story a revelatory guide to the epic of epics and to the past 60 years of american culture from a beloved authority on the subject who read all 27,000 plus marvel superhero comics and lived to tell the tale oh my god there's so, so many i know so if you're a comics I've fan a marvel fan um it's nice to see some great 
nonfiction. It's a big part of our culture. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people, when they think of nonfiction, they think of like diet and food and memoirs and war and history, but um, there's like a, a deep history of like all of the characters and all of the comics and like issue by issue, month by month. Wow. And I think that's really cool because it is part of our culture and mm -hmm. part of our um, our entertainment history. And there are, there are footnotes at the bottom, like oh, so it's very Douglas serious. Wolf did the research, did the research, and um, it's just so interesting to see the story behind some of the the characters and the storylines and how they go together. Um, so there's all about Thor. There's all about Miles Morales in here. Uh, there's just a lot in here. So Wolverine, Squirrel Girl, For your Girl, diehard uh, Marvel fans. Shield. Really you know, and anybody who's ever trying to, like, put it all together in your head, how do you follow all these threads and everything? I just think this is so cool. So I love, there There have been some That's books about, yeah. yeah, about comics and superheroes, and I think this is a really good one. Uh, great gift for the comics lover in your life or for yourself. Nice. Um and then, this one sounds really good, uh, the Korean Vegan Cookbook. Mm. Very nice. Uh, reflections and Recipes from Oma's Kitchen. Mm. And uh, Oma, I, I have eaten a lot of Korean food. I've eaten a lot of Korean food growing up. I had so many really close friends in high school who are Korean. Um, so I love Korean cooking. And so I saw this book and I was like, oh just love like the good the gochujang which is like a hot chili sauce and all the ingredients and the oh ooh, look at that stone pot bread and we're very lucky we live in an area where you have access to a lot of groceries that you might not have in other parts of the country so. kimchi i love kimchi yeah. lots of good soups shops, and good stews stuff. noodles and pastas and there are just some stories about like her family and then everything and uh, where the recipes come from, knife cut Is noodles. the chef somebody who's on TV or anything? Do we know her from uh, somewhere? I don't know. The reviews for it were really awesome. Um, Joanne Lee Molinaro. I don't know. Um, sorry, Joanne. I don't know. Um, okay. No, she's a trial lawyer. Wow. Okay, that's even maybe more interesting. She's not a TV Oh, cook. she, she um, is she's immensely popular on TikTok. Okay. Uh, but she's also been featured in Bon Appetit, The Atlantic, The Kitchen, um, and on Food Network, CNN, BBC, and CBSN. So wow. she is. So she's got some. She's got some credentials. She's yeah. She is Cooking making credentials. it. Good, good yeah. for you. Good for nice. you. Look at this power bowl. Look that at that. Really good. Tofu, kimchi, spicy soy sauce dressing, and it's all nice and fresh. It's just all fresh. Persimmon puree. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Oh my that gosh, cupcake. that cupcake looks delicious. Look at that cupcake. That looks really good. Okay, look how it has persimmon puree. My mom loves persimmon. Oh. Chocolate persimmon cupcakes. You have to make it. And it's vegan. Yeah. It's a little different. Looks good. What does it mean? Me with vegan butter. Okay. Well. Anyway, it looks really good. Um, I'm excited for that. And then I have two young adult ones. The first one is the sequel to Aristotle and Dante Discover. Aristotle and Denver discover the secrets of the universe, not just the universe, but it, look at the first book, look at how award decorated yeah, it that is. that one got them all pretty much. Um, <laughs> so Benjamin O'Leary Sainz has written the sequel, Aristotle and Dante drive into the waters of the world. Um, nice. So it won a Prince Honor, a Stonewall, Stonewall Book Award, Pura Bell Pry Award. I can't read what the last one is, but what is it? Kirkus Review, best teen book of the year. School Library Journal, best book of the year. This one is definitely going to follow in its footsteps. We have the first one, and also bonus, the first one, the audiobook, is read by Lynn manuel Miranda. Oh, cool. So. we'll do the second one. I don't know. I'd like to have I don't know, voices. but if you like audiobooks, I know, it's nice to have yeah, it's nice to have consistency, yeah. Um, and then I know there's a new season of the show Titans out, I believe on, what's the HBO app, HBO Now. Yeah. Um, I used to watch Titans when it was on the CW, and I know a lot of, that's drawing a lot more attention to Beast Boy and Raven, and they have a new, a new Teen Titans comic that just came out that we just got. And I have another, I have another Raven comic as well. So I'm just trying to kind of fill the gaps in the young adult room with some of these uh, popular DC Literally characters. Literally filling the gaps. <laughs> like Literally. finding a space and putting a book Literally, in. Literally, where's their space? I'm going to shove it in so that anybody yeah. who wants to read the books yeah, that's what she does. can she have access to, to it. She literally is putting a book in a space. I'm doing my best. Yeah. yeah. 
doing my best. <laughs> so that's everything. I had a lot of stuff. Sorry, but there are some really, there even, I mean, there were a lot of things and Janet put them out this morning and they are already gone. People saw them on the shelf or saw that they were available and requested them. Wow. And right. they're, they're off. Bye-bye. Yeah. So thanks. lots of good nice. books came out today. All right. Well, we have, we didn't have as many with the kids. This but, is a um, nice pile though. It is a good pile. Uh, I have first off a tale of sorcery by Chris Culper. Ooh. His super popular Land of Stories. This is this is part of a prequel series, mm. um, and they're just you can't keep enough, can't keep them on the shelves. Kids no, I know these. kids are going to um, be so excited that there's a prequel series. Yeah, yeah, and it's been. I think this is number three in the prequel That's awesome. series, um, and his original series was really really popular. So Chris Colfer of uh, Glee fame. Uh, he was in Glee, and now he's a writer. Oh, sorry, it's off this way. Everything's backwards now. <laughs> backward. He's he's uh, he's um, writing and very popular. Another super popular kids author, Gary Paulson, has How to Train Your Dad. Hmm. This one sounds great. Gary Paulson has a really great sense of humor, um, but it also sounds like it could have some moving moments. Um, it's about a kid who is tired of his dad's uh, single-minded pursuit of quirky, off-the-grid existence. His dad is brilliant, but dumpster diving for food, scouring through the trash for salvageable junk, and wearing clothes fully sourced from garage sales is getting old. Increasingly worried about what others might think about his circumstances and encouraged by his enthusiastic best friend, Carl adopts the principles set forth in a randomly discovered puppy training pamphlet to change his dad's mindset. So they say this book is not only about family, it's about environmentalism um, and That's other important. really issue, interesting issues. Um, and how, I guess parents, what their choices are and how it, how it affects kids. And so I think it'll be really fun. How to train your dad. Can an old dog learn new tricks? I don't know. Can they? I don't know. My kids finally got me to convert to an iPhone. So after many, many years of refusing to have a smartphone, I got a smartphone. Well, and you then like I refused, it now, right? And then I refused like to have it. an iPhone, and I got an iPhone. So you can teach this old dog new tricks. So. <laughs> you call yourself an old dog. I call oh, myself an old dog. It's true. Now, this one's just out today. Very popular. J.K. Rowling, The Christmas Pig. I know most people know her uh, from Harry Potter mm -hmm. fame. But she's been writing a couple others, and this one looks to be very cute. It's got some really cute illustrations in it. Perfect for the holiday season. Um, and it is about a beloved toy called Der Pig or DP. And on a Christmas Eve, something terrible happens. It's lost. Uh, but Christmas Eve is a night of miracles and lost causes, a night when all things can come to life, even toys. So Jack and the Christmas Pig, DP's irritating replacement, embark on a breathtaking journey through the magical land of the lost. With the help of a talking lunchbox, a brave compass, and a winged thing called Hope, they set off to rescue the best friend Jack ever had from the terrifying, toy-crunching loser. Oh. Oh. So anyway, I think it's a great, like, a holiday-type story. Plus, just people are going to be looking for J.K. Rowling books. So yeah. it's new. And, okay. This one, I just loved the title. I loved the picture. I have oh, a thing for so, mice, so like, in stories. I love thing, mice in stories. I don't know why. And this one is called Clarice the Brave, and it's from the New York Times bestselling author Lisa McMahon. She's written um, all of those ones the kids really love called The Unwanteds. Mm -hmm. um, and this is her newest, and it's about a little mouse, and the mouse and her family live on a ship, and there's a mutiny on board the ship, and Clarice and her brother have to learn that sometimes being careful isn't enough. Oh. Uh, yeah, sometimes you have to be daring, and... Um, I just, I think it sounds wonderful and enchanting, and like many books with animals as the protagonist, it probably has some very deep meanings for kids in there, but when mm -hmm. you put the animal as the character that's in danger, it helps kids to separate themselves from it and, and observe it more than uh, be too, too involved or too disturbed by it. So I think this is going to be a really fun one, and uh, came out today. Oh, just, that's so just nice. Out today. Yeah. Uh, I am now, enchanted by the cover. I know, it's, really, it's really cute. It's, I just love anything with Little Mice. Like, Stuart Little was my favorite book when I was a little kid. So mm -hmm. anything like that has just always really gotten me. Um, this one is called Thank You, Neighbor by Ruth Chan. And it's just a really fun, cute tribute to being kind to your neighbors. And um, just it's just got a really fun, nice little diverse neighborhood um, that uh, the child lives in. And um, everybody's real friendly and helpful. And, uh, you know, you've got your stereotypical saving, uh, fireman saving uh, cats, but you've also got uh, the bus driver the, that helps the, 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 the older folks off and drops them around and, you know, takes care of the, takes care of the neighbors. 
Oh, and even a fun shower in the sprinklers in the uh, in the fire hydrant, but only because the fire hydrant. Cat dead. is not happy about that. Cat, cat's like, oh, should have left me up me in that tree. Yeah, oops, <laughs> yeah, yeah, get me back in the tree away from this fire hydrant. So anyway, it looks just really fun yeah. and enchanting. What little. a nice little community story. Yeah, I just think it's perfect for now because we kind of need these. Kind of things. Yeah. Uh, and then hot off the presses today, uh, oh. another popular Sherry Rinker um, book, construction site book, construction site road crew coming through, and it's just chock full of awesome uh, trucks and construction vehicles, which kids oh. love. Kids love these books. They just really love them, and they're always in the bestseller list. So um, this one has some really warm colors. So her other book is more of a nighttime book, but then this one does fade to uh, to the nighttime too. Oh, I um, love I love the style of the illustration. Yeah, I yeah, and I just love it because usually, you know, like I said, it kind of starts off real bright, but it's fading to the darkness because it's also like a little bedtime story. So they they all go to bed, and uh, oh, and there's like a hidden little coyote in there, like a little Ooh. look and find thing. So yeah, I think that this is gonna be really popular. And last but not least, this one by Brendan Wenzel, Inside Cat. Oh, um, I feel like this author is a little quirky. Yes. But this book had great reviews. Yeah, the first one was. Yeah, he's quirky. just a little Very quirky. interesting. Yeah, though. interesting but quirky. It's oh yeah, from they all saw a yeah. cat, which yeah. was a really that's a more of like almost like a philosophical class, uh, book about when you see you know what you see and, and we did that one in story time we did, though, we and did the kids like we thought we were like yeah. oh this is very quirky and weird and serious and the kids were like oh that's so fun yeah it was definitely deeper than I would think kids would like and this one is kind of similar it's also about a different way of seeing things and just all about a cat and an indoor cat and as you know I also feel like cats need to get more due in the children's picture book collection because we have a lot of dog books mm -hmm. so I try to buy some cat books when I can and this cat is just always inside wondering and staring and, and oh. doesn't seem to be missing much. She seems to have be, and there's lots of little details for kids to pick out in the illustration. So it's definitely a great book for sharing one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, because there's a lot going on in all the illustrations. And he doesn't seem to be particularly curious or anything. And he thinks he's got it all under control. And he knows everything. An inside cat might know it all. Nothing more for him to do. He knows everything. Oh, and that's the last page. It's him walking out into the world and being oh. completely amazed. Oh, and even his house is shaped like a cat, which I love. Um, but I think it's kind of like a, you know, the old dog new tricks. This is yeah. apparently the old cat new tricks. <laughs> that's not what Licorice did when she walked out of my house once. She hid under a bush. Uh, yeah, under my cat too, window actually. And <laughs> she screamed. She screamed, apparently. When I had a cat, he did the same thing. He did not come out. He was. T I, had to, I had to chase him out with a broom on, from under the bushes. He did not want to come out. And I had to hold the door open so he could run right into it. She followed yeah. me out of the house, apparently, and I didn't see her because I was carrying big things. But like how luggage. much more enchanting is it to think of the cat being like, oh. Yeah, rather than like oh. our wimpy cats. Yeah. <laughs> So well, it's a world it's of fun. possibilities. Yeah, yeah. And there's a cat looking very small inside the world. But I think that was cool. But that is that is nice. You may think that you know everything, but yeah, there's always so much more to learn. So much more to learn. And I just I think he has a very quirky style. So I think you might enjoy this one. It's cute. That and one's the cover's really super cute, cute with yeah. the guys on the front. So and that's it. That one comes out today too. So I am. So look at that. We both okay. had a, some yeah. really good stuff today. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, more coming. You know, this has been this has been a big publishing month. There has been a lot of stuff. Yeah. Trying to beat that After holiday like a, rush, I guess. Yeah, I feel like there was like a like a, like a dry spot in the middle. You yeah, kind of like August period. was a little yeah. dry. Yeah. yeah, but now we're getting back into the Ooh, spring. Like very yeah. good holiday stuff coming up. Presents thing, you know, keeping in yeah. mind. Anything. Yeah, you could use us as your guide for yeah. presents to get for friends for yeah. holidays, birthdays, whatever. Just showers, because. baby, sh anything. We have we got all we got all the ideas. We do. <laughs> we do. Yep, so. we got all the all the thoughts. Yeah, so. so uh, yeah, okay, I already it. have a couple for next week. I know oh, we gotta we gotta do what we do where we get on here and we say Baker and Taylor send, send us a box. Send me another box. Because sometimes when we leave this room, there's a box, but I don't want to jinx it. So no, it's I don't true. know. It's true. But let's let's hope we get another box of more so. good stuff for all of more you news. next week. Come on, Baker and Taylor, our our little sweet patrons are looking for it. We need more books. <laughs> we need we have so think many of the books. children. <laughs> We have so many books. We're just playing. Yeah, come check out all of our displays. And yeah. if you're not sure what you're looking for, come ask us. We're happy to help. Yeah. And uh, all right, that's see it for this soon. week. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.